This program is brought to you through Full Gospel Evangelism, a ministry that was founded and led by Bishop David McKivett. We believe Jesus is still healing, saving and working miracles today. To contact us, write or to us at Full Gospel Evangelism, 81 Valentin Road, E17 3JJ. You can also telephone us or send us a text on plus 447-786-90931 or plus 440-2085-2051-49. Join our Facebook group Bishop McKevitt Ministries, follow Bishop McKevitt on YouTube, support us with an online donation. Our details are Full Gospel Evangelism account number 9906-2135. Short code 60 22 Thank you, God bless you. God bless you, God bless us all. Amen. Thank you for coming again to, to learn. Yeah, to wine and dine at the feet of Christ. May he feed us up to satisfaction in Jesus' Amen. mighty name. Amen. And Amen. may his word continue to turn our lives around Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Daddy, Bishop McKivet, for this opportunity once again. I do not take it for granted. I know that you're, you're very picky when it comes to choosing choosing somebody to come and minister on the platform and it's not out of self-pride but i know it's out of being careful mm -hmm. to have the gospel you know taught to us according to the scripture says so thank you daddy i pray that almighty god will move in me in in taking on this assignment tonight and also moving every one of us so that we take on board will be useful for our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, especially in the area of controlling our anger. May God help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We did it up to a certain point last week where we were reading the Proverbs of Solomon concerning um how to control our anger and why it is good for us to be like that. So this is just a recap. And we also said that we must only yield to holy anger, not on holy anger. We, we did say what holy and unholy anger is. Holy anger, we term it to be something that is directed towards, the, towards sin against people of God or against God. So if that anger is not for your own self aggregation or promotion and um, is to correct some wrongdoings in the society, mm, but we must be constructive in how we present ourselves so that we don't create further, you know, further disruption whilst trying to bring order. So may God help us. We talked about that. We used the example of Jesus Christ as well in the book of Mark when he went to the Temple. Mm. We're saying all of this in order to ensure that we need to be a new self. We need to be, yes, a new self that is created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Mm. One of the powers that the Holy Spirit has given to believers after their spiritual transformation through faith in Jesus Christ is self control self control if one is able to curtail the activities of the self outside and inside through the help of the holy spirit yes then one is working under the anointing of self control we are all prone to anger Amen. but not the other type of anger that will come out through our emotions and then we start to blot out all sorts of things that even after looking back, you will feel like, oh, you become angry at yourself as to why did I do that? What prompted me to that? So we all need to be on guard at all times and pray that Heavenly Father shall continue to sanctify us and increase self-control in us. Self-control as in the fruit of the spirit. And we all we know the um, attributes of that fruit. Book of Galatians 5, 22 to 23 tells us all about that. 
And Ephesians 4.32 says, we should be kind and merciful and forgive others, just as God forgave us because of Christ Jesus. So there's no need to get angry. We've established that. So now we are going on now to where I said what the Bible says about anger. What does the Bible teach us about anger? How to handle it and what to do in situations where, where we find ourselves maybe sliding a little bit. And um, true prayers, reading of the scriptures, being in the company of like-minded fellow Christians, listening to um, Christian worship songs, all of this can help us to develop further in self-control and dissipate the emotion of anger in us so that we don't take rash actions, okay? It is very, it is a very important life skill, yes? Self-control, it is very important. And um, we know that we all have that problem. Out of 100 people, at least 50 of us are still struggling with anger management on how to deal with anger or solve problems with dealing with anger. And anger can cause a lot of, you know, a lot of breakdown in, in communication and can tear apart our relationships. And it can ruin both the joy and health of many. So we all tend to justify our behavior, especially that of anger. Instead of accepting responsibility for it, we all struggle in varying degrees with anger. So my own level of anger might be very, very, very low volatile. Whilst maybe my partners can be very high volatile. So we have to be mindful of each other. And when we are dealing with each other in love, we'll be able to understand that, yeah, this person can take it in the odd seat, they can take it up to level six. So we won't go beyond that level six in dealing with them. And we also keep them in our prayers and vice versa. We keep each other in prayers so that we do not fall into that temptation of getting angry. And when we do, we do not sin. The Bible says we, we should not sin we can be angry, but do not sin. And we've said the type of anger now that is allowed us as followers of Christ. So we know, we know, because I know that on this platform, I have my mothers and fathers and they are even able to teach me about anger. So I'm taking it up to like level five. I'm not back to level one again because we've had that discussion last week so from the level five i we now understand that everybody struggles with it so we have to bear with each other don't forget that fruit of the spirit and the attributes don't forget when we remember we bring ourselves to a place of humility to always be reminded by the spirit of god when the spirit convicts us that no you're going the wrong way we should be you know lowly enough to accept and try and you know reflect in order to piece together where I'm missing it or where I'm yet to. You understand, nobody's hundred percent perfect in any of this. But the the word of God, which is the Bible that we study, contains all the principles regarding how to undo anger in a godly manner and how to overcome sinful anger. Anger is not always sin, as we said. It is only when you cross that borderline that you now begin to sin with your anger. You are not letting go. You're not forgiving somebody in your heart. You're, you're saying you're forgiving, but you're still abhorring, you know, some sort of ill feelings to the extent that when you see that person, you feel like you want to vomit. That is great. That is, it, 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 it's another level of it. If you feel like you want to vomit when you see somebody or hear their voice, then that is taking you to the verge of being able to commit murder. So I pray God that God will keep us from any of this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
There are two Greek words in the New Testament that are translated as anger. One means passion, energy, one, and the other one means agitated boiling. So I believe from those two um, areas, we, we are able to know that passion, energy, which is okay, should be directed to the right course. It's all part of emotion. Should be directed to the right course of action that will benefit yourself and everybody. Yes. And that will uplift the name of the Lord. The other part, agitated and boiling, oh, is dangerous. Even to your health, it is very, very dangerous. And then people will begin to know you that, oh, you are that type of person. Don't go near her. Don't even go there. You, you don't know when she's happy and when she's not happy. She's always ready to pounce on anyone. So we have to be careful of that. Yeah, we have to be careful of that. Mm. The anger is God given energy intended to help us solve problems. Can we believe that? So it's got some positive aspects on it as well. Anger, biblical given energy intended to help us solve problems. So can anger actually solve problems? I, I, I'm asking that question. It will come in the interactive session. I, I believe that we, we will be able to, to, to answer some of that, um, the, that question in a way or two. Okay. I've got two examples for that here. David, when he became upset about what Prophet Nathan had to tell him about injustice, he was angry. Now, how can a rich man now go and take a poor man's lamb or sheep <laughs> for himself? He was angry. He, he wanted to resolve it quickly. And he said, bring that man before me. But thank God, Prophet Nathan was able to now let him know that it's you. He was angry to correct. But who now is going to be corrected? So he's himself. And there's no one to correct him but himself. I said it before, not to the point of you thinking, why did I ever do a thing like that? God should keep us in control, self-control. God should enable us to exercise it. And we know the number of sins committed in that little scenario from the book of 2 Samuel 12. And the other one we've talked about, Jesus Christ, when he was addressing the Jewish people about defiling the temple of God, he corrected them. He was angry. Yes, they knew. He, he lashed out at them. He was angry. And he told them, this place is not for your trading, buying and selling. It is a house of worship. He, he was angry. He let them know why he was angry. And he let them know why it is sinful what they are doing. And then he corrected them that, it should be for worship and worship only. And that was it. End of story. It, there was no carryover. He has said it to correct. And that's it. So people of God, let us always be in that mind at all times. Yes, may God help us. So in, in these two cases, yes, it did not involve self-defense, but the defense of others, of a principle, God's principle not self-defense, so not for my own good. Not that I, I'm so proud that I feel nobody, no, you can't talk to me like that. What do you mean? Daddy, Daddy, um, Bishop McKeefield, just because I call you daddy, what do you mean? <laughs> I pray that that will not happen to me or to any of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So it is not that type of anger now. It is important to recognize that anger at an injustice inflicted against oneself is also appropriate. So like being a victim, victim of abuse, prostitution, even victim of emotional abuse at all times. It is a trauma and the anger comes in stages. Sometimes you're not even angry Initially, you just want, this is the problem. If you are able not to bottle it up and talk to somebody, yes, you are able to talk about it. You are able to pray about it. They are able to, you know, outline for you what steps you need to take. You know that then maybe later when you are saying that, wow, why did I allow this to even happen to me? 
I should have spoken up or I should have left that toxic relationship. Then you, you, you can be angry at yourself for allowing it and also angry at the perpetrator. So you're angry at yourself as the victim. You're angry at the perpetrator for making you a victim. So people of God, let us be aware. Let us be aware of all of these things. Yeah. Mm. Anger has been said to be a warning flag. It alerts us to those times when others are attempting. Sorry. When others are attempting to or have violated our boundaries. God cares for each individual. So when somebody is now saying to you or doing things to you that you believe, no, 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 this is me. This is inhuman. This shouldn't be happening. You now begin to think, how can you escape from the, is flee or flight. You either want to face that person and confront them and, and say, challenge them and all of that, or you want to walk away. Keep yourself safe by setting a boundary that no, no, this won't happen to me again. No, no, it won't happen to me again. So there are so many things we can do to control our anger. And in all these cases, don't rule God's care and help out of it. God loves us. Don't rule him out. As long as you are convicted in your act that, mm, I have not fallen into that temptation. Although he's there at the door, sin is at the door. God, help me, help me overcome. I don't want to be seen as somebody that is always unhappy or a hater. Yes, somebody, we label some people haters. They don't like any good thing. They don't contribute positively into any conversation or anything at all. You don't want to be that. So I pray that when the time is right, we will be able to stand up for ourselves in Jesus' mighty. And I also pray that we shall not be victims of anybody's anger or ill behavior, inhuman behavior towards us, then that will drive us to now get angry and do things. So may God help us. Yeah. Mm. And as I said, it is a traumatic experience for some and they're not able to deal with it no and along the line anger might emerge but we need god we need god to help us in all these situations because these situations are complex we now need to consider each individual situation at its own merit so it's not a blanket for all uh, nigerian people hmm, they are all for one night that's a bad statement to make Or all women are prostitutes. Or all men are pedophiles. No, no. So each situation now has to be considered in its own merit in order to resolve, in order to resolve, people of God, in order to resolve. And also, given to God, eventually the, the effects will dissipate with counseling, and love from other people, one we now come to a place of acceptance and even to forgive. So we are still ruling out carryover anger now. We are still ruling that out. It's a very long journey. And especially for, for people who, who, who suffer with anger issues. They need prayer. We all need prayer. But we have to be ready to let go. We have to reflect and recognize that we have that in ourselves. We have to now remember that we need to be self-controlled. We have to bring into habit the book of Galatians 5, 23 to 22 to 23. And not just that, if we start from 18, now we know all the things that we are not meant to be doing as well. So we, you have to be in a place of being able to study the scriptures, being able to understand through the Holy Spirit, being able to apply to the situations around you and being genuinely loving and kind towards others. Humility is important in all these things. So let us pray, let us pray, let us pray. God will help us. It does not mean that anybody going through the process is living in sin. Who are we to condemn anyone? 
Even Jesus Christ said he didn't come to the world to condemn, but to save all sinners who come to him. But who are you now to judge and condemn that you, you are living in sin? Not outrightly condemning. Whatever you need to do in correcting, you now need to do it in Christian love, the love of Christ, the love of Christ. I was reading through the book of um, Corinthians, I believe is the book of First Corinthians. Or, yeah, First Corinthians 9. I was reading through and I read, brought it down to 9, 19 to 27. I will implore us to read that. That situation that Paul and the apostles found themselves in. Yeah, they could be angry. They have a right to demand from the people. Like those who came to deceive them were demanding. You know, but they didn't do that. It, it charged them. It talked to them. It made them understand that this is how it is. People of Corinth, this is what is expected of you. So people of God, let us bear that in mind. And also, Proverbs 17, 27 to 28, I'll read that. I didn't read the first one because it's long-winded. This one is short. He that hath knowledge, spirit is word. So when you know that little, little things can lead to, you know, unpalatable situations, you keep quiet. You spare your words. You, you use your words sparingly. And the man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Yes, you uplift everybody. You uplift yourself. Oh, she, yeah. oh, that one. Let us try. We all must pray for it. Let us, you know, you use subtle words to encourage people. And even a fool, when he all that is peace, is counted wise. So even where people think, ah, that person is just a foolish person. She will start talking now. That Akobieri, she doesn't keep quiet. Now she will start talking. Hold your peace. And people will say, eh, change my today. So instead of those who are waiting to pounce on you as, as, <laughs> as soon as you start talking, they would have to now give themselves be quiet because they are not giving that opportunity. It does happen on the platforms. It happens wherever we go. Once you are in the midst of people, don't forget, don't rule it out. Anger can happen. Situations can happen. But self-control is the key thing. May the Holy Spirit help us. So it, that's what that book of Proverbs is saying. That foolish man, if he keeps quiet, he will be counted. And he that shut at his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. So you don't have to have answers for every question or for every situation. Sometimes you, 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 you overlook. You overlook. You're praying. You're praying in yourself that God, Help us. Another situation when the, the old thing is calmer, maybe. You know, this is all part of being in the attitude of Christ and not letting anger come over you. You are controlling the anger that might come over you. So people of God, I pray, as I always do, that heavens will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Heavens will help us in order to, you know, to, to always glorify God in everything that we do. We have to, we have to, yes. Handling anger biblically by seeing God in trials. Trials. Because we go through a lot of trials and we, we were not promised smooth sailing. We were not promised smooth sailing at all. I'm looking at the time. I think I've almost gone over the time. So I'll quickly round up and then we can go uh, into our got, questions. You've got five minutes, sister. Yes, yes, daddy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. And confession is important to both God and to those who have been hurt by our anger. You know, the way we treat people. And we should not, we should not be blame shifting or just trivializing things. A lot of people are hot, even when you now look at it and say, Shane, yeah, it's so simple, too simple. But in them, they are hot. They, they take it, they're not taking it lightly. So we should be aware at all times of other people's feelings. Do unto others as you wish them to do unto you. That is what the Bible says to us. And also, even people that 
have said something to offend us or have done something to offend us. James 1, 2 to 4, my references for that, I won't be reading. Romans 8, 28 to 29, and the book of Genesis 50, 20. As I said, I will not be reading because of time. So we can take them down, read them whilst we are going through, and then we can bring up questions about them. Yeah. We say at all points, we should be aware of the fact that God is sovereign over every circumstances and person that crosses our paths. Nothing happens to us that he does not cause or allow. So God knows and he causes things to happen. Like you know, I mentioned trials is to build us up, to make us stronger in faith, to make us stand, continue to stand on Christ the rock and to strengthen us and empower us and give us authority in spirit. So this sometimes situations happen like that. Sometimes God allow bad things to happen. He's always faithful to redeem them for the good of his people. God is a good God. Psalm 145, 8, 9, and 17. So we have to reflect on all these things as being true. And we can undo anger biblically by making room for God's wrath. You know, sometimes it's God's doing. This is especially important in the cases of injustice. When evil men abuse innocent people, we need to at least look at it and, you know, try to decipher what exactly is going on in a biblical or godly manner. It is not every situation that you have answers for or solution for. So we have to be careful. Yes, we have to be careful. Romans 12, 19, Genesis 15, 19, both tells us to not play God. God is righteous and just, and we can trust him who knows all this and sees all to act justly. He is there. He's got our back. If we are in him and he's in us, he's got our backs. But if not, we are on our own. Yeah. We can handle langa biblically by returning good for evil. Returning good for evil. Romans 12, 21. Again, Genesis 20, 21. It, this is key to converting our anger into love, coming to the commandments of Jesus Christ the fulfillment of the Ten Commandments. So converting our anger into love. As our actions flow from our hearts, so also our hearts can be altered by our actions. Matthew 5, 43 to 48. That is, we can change our feelings towards another by changing how we choose to act towards that person. We can undo anger biblically by communicating to solve the problem. Yes, I've got basic rules, but I would leave that to maybe when we recap or when people are asking questions. So we thank God for today. We've learned a lot from last week and um, going on from there, we say that God shall continue to open our minds to correcting our ways to self being in self-control through the help of the Holy Spirit and love for everyone and love for God and respect in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, people of God. Bye.